The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. One lap before we go green, three cars behind the wall. Paul Menard, David Reagan, and Michael Waltrip. Hey, Danica, it's DW. You still got, uh, got your headset on down there? I'm here. I'm all wired up. Uh, did, you saw the wreck on Friday with Tony. What, did, yeah. what, did, what are you seeing? What are you learning from these accidents that we're seeing? Well, it's looking like if you get hit on the left side of the bumper, as we're seeing, um, the bad things are happening. And so, you know, obviously with the rule changes and losing 50 counts of rear downforce and, and what effects those things have had over the last couple of months of getting changed, maybe they have bigger effects than we really know. I know Ryan Newman was saying that his car was looser out there uh, when he was bump drafting than, than had previous, previously been, and he was correcting for that and dropping the track bar to make it a little easier to drive. So, you know, maybe these cars are more on edge. I mean, you know, we're running in a pack, so, you know, you take side force away and you're running so much closer and you've got, you know, probably less aero down force. So, you know, how much closer to the edge are we with these rule changes and with the pack running uh, versus what we were before when we were a two-car tandem just spread out? So you know, as, a rookie, uh, as a rookie, as a rookie, are you are you learning things that will be helpful to you when you find yourself in these situations? <laughs> yeah, if I'm pushing Tony, do not go to the left side of his car. If I'm pushing Ryan, do not go to the left side of the car. But I just think you're seeing that you know it's perhaps a little bit more dangerous to uh, to be bumping each other in the pack than it was before. And when you're running really close, you have to react very quickly to things. So as we saw with with Kurt trying to move up the track with Tony pushing him, you have to make quick movements when you're running in a pack and you know that 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 car behind you cannot see. And so if you can't see, then you're not going to follow him up the track and you know perhaps accidents are going to be a little bit easier and now that we're in a pack, they're going to be a little bigger. Thanks Danica. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is our leader, 14 laps complete. Kevin Harvick second on the restart. Martin Truex, Jamie McMurray, Joey Logano. Then Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Greg Biffle, Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, the top 10. Starting at the rear will be Matt Kenseth. They rolled a tire on their pit stop out of the pit box. He goes tail into the field. We're back under green. 15 down, 10 to go to the halftime break. I think there's, a, there's about two, three or four cars that have really shown me a lot of speed. That 29's one, the, the one car's one, Dale Jr.'s 88 car, and maybe, maybe the Napa car of uh, Truex. I'm just not sure how good he is yet. Our top six drivers did not hit on that caution right there. Saw the speedy dry down in turns one and two from the accident. And Mike, this is what, this could be the end of the race. And you see what we've got. We've got, uh, 29 and 1, Harvick and uh, McMurray pushing each other away from the pack. And this is what guys are going to be thinking about coming the end of the race. So off turn four, Harvick the leader from Jamie McMurray. Little bump and shuffle back there about sixth place as we check in with Dick Bergeron. Michael Waltrip, you're right in the middle of that. What was it like? It was crazy. I caught on fire and everything, Dick. I twittered before the race started that I was going to share the track with the greatest drivers in the world. I think approved right there, even the greatest drivers sometime run out of room. And uh, what a big pack is everything we hope for. I think you'll see them calm down a little bit now, though. Probably spread out a little. I hope so. Thank you, Michael. Well, the pack has caught those two leaders, and McMurray breaks out from behind Kevin Harvick. McMurray in the number one, Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming in third in the 88, then Truex, Kyle Busch on the bottom, and Ryan Newman makes his first appearance in the top half dozen. He's in the 39. That one car of McMurray's has got some steam. I'm telling you, he drops down in front of these guys, pulls a little gap on them. He's showing me a lot of speed right now. And what's amazing in those two practice sessions we had, Jamie McMurray really didn't do a whole lot much more than just work with his teammate, Juan Pablo Montoya, in the 42. Yeah, they were way down on the speed chart, but right now that car looks pretty fast. Truex comes back to the front with help from Kyle Busch in the 18. Greg Biffle drops in line with them. And, and here comes Kurt Busch to help younger brother. I can't say enough about Kurt Busch and his race team. You know, this is the little team that can't. And, and this is a backup car. No time on the racetrack. And here he's up there running into the top five, starting at the back of the, of the field. Harvick 29 and Stewart 14 fill in in the bottom lane. But out front, Martin Truex. And Kyle Busch, two Toyotas, they are tandem drafting. With Busch being careful to stay, he was being careful to stay to the right side of Truex's back bumper. Now he breaks free, drifts down to the left, gets some clean air. Yeah, you know we're talking about Kurt Busch in that 51 car. Look at that.
looking to the outside there, making a pretty strong move. Junior Johnson found out here in 1960, you don't have to have the fastest car. You just got to get yourself in the right spot. And right now, Kurt Busch is making some big moves. Well, Harvick sliced to the bottom in the 29, and Kurt comes down to cover the spot, takes advantage of that draft, and brings the James Finch car to the lead. But for how long, Truex comes pounding back on the outside. Side by side, coming to the line to complete lap 16. It's Truex by a car length. Darrell, one thing that seems like it has come back, if you get stuck in the middle, like Greg Biffle in that 16 car, they send you toward the back. It's a sucker hole, and, they, and what some of the guys were telling me was when you get in there, the car won't suck up. It won't keep going. It stalls out. That's what the cars used to do when we ran like this. Casey Kane has made a pit stop. He's now gone three laps down. Back on track, however. And I hate a car won't suck up. Truex McMurray. Carl Edwards, your front three, Kurt Busch, all four at the top of the racetrack, Harvick, the red car on the bottom. Pretty interesting right now how this is unfolding. This is, we saw this in the test, but we were all a little cautious about, are we gonna see them race like this, or are they just uh, pulling the wool over our eyes? Right now, it looks pretty good. Now watch the men in the middle. Teammates Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson trying to make something happen from mid-pack. Boy, it is hard to climb the ladder from the middle lane. Well, Jeff Gordon in five time, they'll bide their time. Well, Jeff Gordon in five time, they'll bide their time. They're pretty patient. When we get back over here to the line, it'll be four laps to that 10 minute break at lap 25. Got another player in that outside line. Oh, cousin Carl, Carl Edwards in that 99. He's worked his way up there to the front. Still trying to fight his way up the middle is Jeff Gordon. Here's Matt. Mike not happy with the shocks in the front of the 24 car. Gordon says that when he loses the air off the nose, when he's tucked up like right now behind the 18 of Kyle Busch, he loses the nose and won't plant. They're looking at making some big adjustments on that stop. Yeah, they can put a little bit more rebound, a little bit more suck down on those front shocks on that 10-minute break. It's easy to do with the clickers. Might fix him right up. Let's see if the 18 of Kyle Busch can find his way up the middle. Nope, he goes to the bottom with McMurray. Is that Newman on the apron? No, I think it was Jeff Burton. The 31 Thank car, you. I believe. Yeah, he got a lot of damage in that wreck a little bit earlier. I know we interviewed Michael Waltrip. He said he thought these guys would settle down. I see no signs of that. Well, they have. They're not wrecking now, anyway. <laughs> they're going in a straight line. They're, all the, they're, they're at least holding their own. You ever get nervous, Larry? Does this make you nervous? It does. Not as nervous as you were a little earlier this I afternoon. Was, I was a whole lot nervous a little earlier today. My heart broke for you and Brandon. I mean, you had that race one. Run out of gas off turn four. Dead gun. The ARCA 200, rookie Brandon McReynolds came within 1,000 feet of winning it. Larry, had a, your son had a great drive today. Didn't get the checkered flag. Bobby Gerhardt did. You should be proud, Larry. That I was a am. beautiful run for him. Yeah, yeah, I think he turned a lot of heads today. McMurray comes up to the middle as Edwards closed in, and now it's a scrum back here for about the third spot. I tell you what, if old Jeff Gordon gets those shock absorbers on the front of that car fixed, no telling what he'll do, because he just came by in third spot. Gordon to third, Truex back to fourth, Biffle moving around him for fifth. You're watching sixth on back right here. And it's Jimmy Johnson with Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick. The, the interesting thing I'm seeing is they can't get to each other like they have in the past. They can't quite get to the guy's bumper like they have in the past. I think that's why we're seeing them run into each other a little bit more. But you're right. When I look up there right now in third and fourth, I see those two Hendrick drivers, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Jimmy Johnson in the 48. They know they only have about another lap or lap and a half to get up there before that break. Here's the other interesting thing. The four car single file in front could not get away from the pack running three wide behind them. That pack has run down, inhaled, and overhauled the front four. Half a lap to the halftime break, and everybody's going to need to catch their breath. And everybody in that pack right now is saying, come on, boys, settle down. We just got a half a lap to go. Oh. 
He saw that line coming in, on the bottom. He tried to jump down in front to see if he could get the push. Nowhere to go. I think Jamie McBurray better watch that inside. He's got enough gap. I think he'll be okay, but that was... Jeff Gordon almost had him set up. Jamie Mack leads the 25th lap from Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and shootout rookie Marcus Ambrose. When the last car comes across, yellow flag waves. And this will be our not quite halftime break, but it is our break. 25 down, 50 to go. And the cars will come to pit road for adjustments. Hey, Danica and Steve yep. W. Yep. 25 laps of pretty fierce racing out there. Getting you're gonna crazy. Go, you're going to go upstairs and watch from upstairs, I guess, and get a bird's eye view. But yeah. Are you? Is this helping you or hurting you watching this race? I always think it looks far more difficult watching than doing. I'd like to be out there. It feels much more calm usually, oddly enough. So maybe you can relate to that. But it looks like there's some yo-yo effects going on. You know, guys doing, you know, bump drafting a little bit, breaking away and then slowing down as the pack catches them. So it's keeping it really interesting. I think NASCAR has given the fans hopefully what they want. I think you're right. And uh, good luck to you. Thank <laughs> you for joining us tonight. It's been fun. Been fun. All right. Thank you. A week from Sunday, she'll be the third woman in history to start the Daytona 500. Jamie McMurray is your leader, and the cars will come to pit road. We'll find out what they'll change and why. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. All the cars have come to pit road for adjustments during this break. Here's Dick Bergman. With Martin Truex, led a bunch of this race. What's it like out there tonight? It's a little crazy, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. We've, uh, we've got an awesome Napa Toyota. We just kind of got shuffled out there at the end, but uh, looking forward to uh, getting back to the front here towards the end. And It's crazy. There's only 25 laps. Still got 50 to go, so a lot of time to race still, but uh, got a great car, and all these guys are doing a fabulous job. Good luck with it. Matt? Looks like old school chaos out there. Is that how you describe it, Jamie? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's honestly back to about what we used to have. Um, even though the handling of the cars is still really good, it's uh, it you know I, I tried to use Kevin as a gauge of if you could push the whole time, and and I could stay on him when the car didn't get too hot. You just don't seem to have the speed that uh, that the pack has. So really happy with our Bass Pro Shop Chevy. It's uh, we had a really tough year last year, and that's that's a really good way to kind of get our season kicked off. Krista. Carl Edwards down here checking out his splitter. So what are you looking for? I know you were worried about running over some debris on that wreck, and how does the car feel? The uh, car's pretty good. It's oh, with the smile. I like that. It's good. Um, this, is, uh, this is fun. It's a good way to start the year, get out here in uh, this kind of race and get your attention. So I'm glad we didn't get caught up in that wreck. I, I didn't exactly see what happened, but our fast and all fusion's fast. Now we're just kind of got to figure out how we're going to pit here and what we're going to do with our tire strategy and and. You know, it's just, uh, it's going to be crazy. But I heard something while I was up behind a guy. I heard something flapping down there, so we just wanted to look at it. And that smile says it all. Thanks, Carl. Dick? Boyer, there were a lot of worries before the start of this race about cars overheating because of the new rules. How is your car doing as far as heat? Well, I'm one of them uh, that was worried, and I'm one of them that's overheating right now. But, uh, you know, our five-hour energy Toyota, I knew I was kind of planning on lagging back. I was afraid they were going to wreck early, and, you know, they did, unfortunately. But, um you know, I think we'll be up there when the time's right. Just kind of a new spotter, a lot of new things. We're, we're learning each other. I'm learning how he says things, and he's learning how I kind of juke and jive. So uh, a lot of learning out there, and hope we'll put it to good use at the end of the thing. All right, good luck. Steve. Well, with Kevin Harvick, Dick, and uh, Kevin, I heard you on the radio say that you really have to be on your toes. You can't go up there and bump draft and hit the guys as hard as you have in the past here. Yeah, you got to be careful because, you, you know, you gain so much speed coming up on the guys when you can't see. Uh, what the gap is so your spotter has to be on our ball billy's done a good job but everything on our budweiser chevy's been fine uh just gotta keep racing hard and try to keep it towards the front of the pack for the end right there all right thanks a lot let's go to mike joy thanks steve as on every nascar caution one car gets the free pass and your aaron's lucky dog goes to denny hamlin who was uh two down you don't need credit all you need is aaron's one big pileup, 10 laps in. David Reagan into the back of Paul Menard. Eight cars involved, three of those out of the race. 